Hi, my name's Ben Lackey. Uh, I'm responsible for cloud partnerships at Couchbase. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use uh, the AWS CLI and CloudFormation to deploy a Couchbase cluster with both Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway. If you have any questions after watching the video, feel free to drop me a line at ben.lackey at couchbase.com or on Twitter at Ben of Ben. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first off, I'm gonna switch over to the AWS Marketplace, and this is Couchbase's page on the Marketplace. Uh, as you can see, there are two offers here. Uh, as a pre prerequisite before using the CloudFormation templates, you'll need to have previously launched both of these offers and subscribed to them. You can check if you're already subscribed by going here to your Marketplace account, clicking on that, and then going to Manage Your Software Subscriptions. And you can see here that I'm subscribed to both of those. Great. Uh, the next step is to go to GitHub and get a copy of the CloudFormation templates from there. Uh, we have a GitHub organization at Couchbase-Partners. And then these templates are under Amazon CloudFormation Couchbase. The repo has a number of different things. Uh, it has a marketplace template that I wouldn't suggest using outside of marketplace as it has some marketplace specific things in it uh, that just don't make sense outside. Instead, you probably want to use this simple template and that's what we'll be using here. There's also a document that covers best practices and this discusses things like why you should use EBS GP2, among other reasons, uh, the disks are encrypted, so you don't have to worry about that. There's also a page with a number of links, and these are links to various Amazon-related resources uh, that talk about Couchbase. So uh, if you click Simple here, uh, you see a couple things. There's a README that gives some background that we're essentially covering in this video. There's also the template itself. And finally, there's a deploy script. And this is a script that invokes the AWS CLI uh, for you so you don't have to remember all the commands and the syntax. So if we want to get started using this, I just need to switch over to my terminal here. And I've already cloned the repo. You can see the same structure is available locally. Uh, I've also installed and configured the AWS CLI and set it up so it's connected to my account. So I can change directory into the simple folder. And once again, you see those same files. Let's take a look at deploy.shell. So deploy.shell uh, sets this to be the template body, the template file. It takes one parameter, the name of the stack you're going to create, and stack is AWS parlance for basically deployment. We're using the default region that's set in the AWS CLI, though you can of course edit the shell script and set it to anything you want. And then there are a number of different settings. Uh, we're going to deploy four server instances, each with 100 gig of uh, EBS GP2, and two sync gateway instances. Uh, those are all going to be M4X large and the Couchbase user and password are as follows. This is also going to create a key if that doesn't exist and use it in the deployment. Finally, there's the actual deploy command. So this is the AWS CLI, uh, CloudFormation under that, and then just passing all this stuff in. So in order to run this, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is deploy.shell and then the name of the stack. So I'm going to call it Ben1. And hit enter and fire it off. This runs asynchronously. So this is everything we're going to see in the CLI now. Uh, it returns a successful submission. Uh, if, as an example, we'd edited the CloudFormation template uh, and made it invalid in some way, we might see an error here. But it looks like it was valid. So let's flip back to the AWS console and take a look at what we have in there. So I'm going to click on CloudFormation. 
and under here you can see it's in the process of building out this stack. I can drill down into that and we can see what it's done so far. So it submitted it, security group, roll, uh, security group's done, roll's done, and now it's working on the instance profile. So at this point, I'm going to pause the recording for a few minutes while we wait for the deployment to finish, and then we can come back and look at what has been deployed. All right, so we're back. I just got a message that the stack had finished deploying. And you can see that here uh, at 181440. If I scroll down, uh, it looks like this began at 1811. So it took right about three and a half minutes for this thing to deploy. So let's go look at what we actually deployed. Uh, if I click here, and click on EC2, we can see uh, that there are 10 volumes running, uh, 6 instances. So that's uh, 6 OS disks, one for each instance, plus 4 data drives, one for each of our server machines. Uh, we can look at this in a number of different ways. Uh, this configuration uses auto-scaling groups, so we have both a launch configuration here, and this is a launch configuration, as you can see, for server, and one for sync gateway. Similarly, down in the auto-scaling groups, we can see one group for uh, sync gateway, another for server, two instances, four instances. Um, we're working to do the automatic scaling and make it possible to change the number of instances dynamically without any manual intervention, uh, but that's not quite all there yet. Okay, so let's go look at the machines now. If we go back to the dashboard, click on instances, and you see here there's six machines running. And these just recently came up, so they're still in the process of uh, fully connecting to EC2 and doing their thing. Uh, we can pick the IP address of one of these and connect to it and try to figure out what it's running. Uh, we're in the process of adding tags and things like that so you'll know which machines are running server and which are running say, gateway, uh, but that's not done quite yet. So let me paste that IP address in and let's try port 8091. So, great, this is a machine running server, uh, and we can log in using the username and password we specified earlier. Uh, if you log in and still see the Couchbase config screen, that means the startup script hasn't quite completed running and you just need to give it a few more minutes. So, if I click sign in, uh, I see here my Couchbase admin, I can scroll down and Looks like this cluster is still starting up, actually. So we have two active servers here, and uh, two that are still rebalancing as the startup script runs. Uh, so that's OK. Uh, let's go back, and let's pick a couple more servers and try connecting to them, too. So let's try, uh, let's try this guy, since he has an outlier IP address, and see what he's running. So let me select that. I'm going to paste that in here and try 8091. Oh, okay. So that's another catch base server node. So we can connect to him and uh, see. Okay, so we still have those two pending rebalance. Uh, we can also rebalance them automatically just by going in here and, and hitting that. And okay, there goes the rebalance. All right, so switch back to the cluster, and let's try another node. Uh, so let's try this node. I'm going to copy this in here, and 8091, nothing running there. OK, so let's try 4984. Sure enough, this node's running our sync gateway here. And uh, this is the sync gateway uh, kind of connection port. Uh, there's also 4985 with the admin port. Uh, we're working on configuring Sync Gateway automatically when this comes up, so it's all connected to uh, your cluster. 
but that's not quite done yet for Amazon. So uh, still a work in progress. But that's all you needed to get a cluster up and running. Uh, it took, if I recall, three and a half minutes for AWS to run and then another few minutes for the startup script to run. And at this point, we have a cluster up and running. If you have any questions as you use these templates and modify them, be sure to reach out and ask questions. We're happy to help. Thanks.